Hey guys! So today we're going to be talking about shortcut keys. They're keys on your keyboard that you press to quickly change tools or to save or do all this other stuff instead of actually having to drag your mouse up to the toolbar or whatever you want to do. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the tool tab up here. When you click on it, all of your tools will show and right next to it is the shortcut key. So the brush is B, erasers, E, all that good stuff. So if I drew this thing and I wanted to erase it and I didn't want to drag my mouse all the way up here even though it's really not that time consuming, I would just click E on my keyboard and I automatically change to the eraser. And there you go. So there's a shortcut key for pretty much every single tool, I think, yep. So if you memorize the ones that you use the most, it might save you a couple of seconds. <laughs> to be completely honest, I don't really use shortcut keys for tools but I use them for pretty much everything else. So I'm gonna talk about the really important stuff, at least to me. So one of the important things are filters, I guess. So let me see if I can open something here. Um, let's go with this. So here's the doodle thing that I have. And let's say I wanted to change the colors a bit. If I use a shortcut for, let me see if I can find it up here. Up here where it says filter, the filter tab, there's levels and hues. I end up using the hues a lot, so that's command U for my computer, so let me just do that. And this thing will pop up. And then I can change the saturation and the brightness, and <laughs> that didn't look very good. And all that good stuff. And the hues, so let me do that again. Resetting it. Change that. Look at all that cool stuff. So this is a really easy way to change the colors. So I use that one pretty much all the time. And another filter is Command L. And like I said, this is just for my computer. I think it's for Macs. If you have something else, the command keys might be a little bit different. But levels, it's all this good stuff. I wish I could explain it, but I'm not even sure <laughs> how. I don't really use the levels that much, so. That's pretty nice. Okay, another really important shortcut key that I use are the editing keys. So if we were to go to the edit tab, see everything here has shortcut keys too. So the undo is super, super important. So if you draw something and you end up not liking how it looks, you just gotta, there we go. I forgot it for a second. So I don't like it. I can just do that as many times as I want. For the Mac, it's Command Z for the undo key. I recommend that if you're barely starting digital art or whatever, you get into the habit of having your fingers on the undo keys all the time. Because let me tell you, you're gonna be undoing a lot of things. And there's also a redo. So if you accidentally undo something, then you can just press, let me see. I never use it, so Command Shift, there we go. It's Command Shift C. But if not, you can just go up here, which is the undo and the redo button, and you can do that. But why would you want to drag your mouse all the way up here when you can just memorize the shortcut key and do it as many times as you want, as fast as you want? Some more very important edit shortcut keys are right here, the cut, copy, and paste shortcut keys. So make sure you have those in mind because you're probably going to be using that a lot too. So copy is for me command C, paste command Z, so let me, there you go. And for the cut is command X. Oops, I, that's the wrong layer. Command X, there you go. And more keys that you should memorize are the image size and canvas size. I am gonna show you the difference for right now because they might sound like the same thing, but they are definitely not. So let me go to this picture again. Let me exit out or crop or whatever. Nope, zoom out. That's what I meant. So the image size pretty much changes the entire size of the image. I, I know that sounds like it's a given, but let me show you. So there you go. For me, it was the command option and then I. So these are the dimensions of the picture. If I was to change it to 500, notice that the height also changed to 500. So the proportions or let me see what it's called. Yeah, the proportions stayed the same. If I was to unclick this and then change it to 500, the height wouldn't change, but it would mess up the entire picture. You notice that? Yeah. 
So when you're doing image size, make sure it's constrained if you know it's necessary. But the difference between image size and canvas size is that while the image changes the size of the actual image, the canvas only changes the size of the canvas as you can expect. So command option C, canvas size. And let me see. So let's change it to 500, the width. And notice there's a red box right here that shows what the picture is going to end up looking like. So press OK and it like crops whatever is not in that proportion. So let me undo that really fast. Um, there's all these options right here. So if I was going to change it to 500 again and I wanted to keep only one character, you know, I can change it to left. And notice it's only highlighted here. There we go. I wish I could explain it better, but I'm not very good at explaining. You can do top left, bottom left, um, top right. Let me change this to 500 too so you can see. There. Notice how it's just moving everywhere. One of the most important shortcut keys is for saving. So if you go up to the file tab up here, there's the new canvas one and the open one and all that good stuff. And you're going to use that pretty often too. But the saving and the save as is really, really important. So save as, you already know what that means. You save it, right? But saving, which is for me the command S, I press it probably more often than I press the undo key. And that's pretty much because sometimes digital art programs may close, like randomly maybe, like if there's something wrong with your computer or your program. For me, after I updated Fire Alpaca like a month or two ago, it hasn't crashed on me at all, so that's really good. But just to make sure it doesn't, or if I accidentally close something, I press Command S for saving pretty often. So I haven't saved it yet, so let's say I'm going to save it like this and I do a couple more and I want to save it, if I click Command S, the pop-up won't come up every time. So, yep. <laughs> make sure you make that a, make it a habit to press the Command S or to press the saving keys as often as you can because if anything happens, you don't want to lose all of your progress. All right, the last um, fire alpaca hack I guess that I'll give you is the environment settings right here. Click that and this little thing will pop up. Um, so this is pretty good for like zooming stuff. These aren't really shortcut keys but they're really good for making things easier on you. So for me if I drag my fingers on the mouse pad it'll do some zooming. So I'll show you right here. See that? I'm not clicking on anything. I'm just using the key, what is it, the <laughs> the mouse pad and it zooms in and out. So that's really good if I don't want to go all the way to these buttons up here. And right here, the right button. So you're, if you're using a tablet, or yeah, a tablet, your tablet pen should have a couple of buttons on it. If not, there might be buttons on your actual tablet. And the right clicking button is something you'll probably never use but you can set it up to be either your eraser or your eyedropper. I never used it as an eraser, so I set it up as an eyedropper tool because I use that pretty often. So if I was coloring, if I had to fill in something here, like, oh god, I'm trying to get a good example, but let's say I wanted to draw something else with this color of his sweater, I would just use the right button and notice how it turned into the eyedropper tool. And I'm holding it down right now, and then I can just click whatever I want, or I'll let it go and when I let it go the color up here changes to whatever the eyedropper was so yep I don't have to actually go up here to the eyedropper tool and then grab it and then go back to the brush that's too time consuming for me so so yep that's what I use it as alright that's the end of this video I hope it was super helpful and I hope you end up using this kind of stuff because it can be very good with time management even though it's only a couple of seconds but listen it's really helpful I do these videos every Tuesday as part of tutorial Tuesday so if you want you can subscribe and you won't miss any videos I also do speed paints every Saturday thank you so so much for watching uh, like subscribe all that good stuff okay Thank you. Bye.